Hello and welcome to another episode of Matthew Answers the Internet, the show where I go online. I hunt down board game questions and by gosh don't I attempt to answer them right here for all of us. If you have any answers to any of the questions or any questions that you want to ask the commenters below yourself then we can get a conversation started below but until then let's go for it. The first question is one that took me a little bit by surprise and it was just expansions yay or nay? Now that is a broad question. All expansions yay or nay? So okay so I started off answering this in my mind with just looking at what board game expansions I own because my original thought was nay I don't really go in for expansions for a couple of reasons we'll get into but the expansions I definitely own are and they've I've for sure this is not a complete list I've got uh, the Grand Fair expansion for Field of Green, which is an incredibly underrated game. Field of Green, top 10 game for me. I absolutely love it. Picomino, Extra Warm. I love that whole chicken series of games. It's one of those weird series that I hunted down and bought everything I could. Uh, and that's a great expansion for that game. I've got the expansion, the first expansion for Coco Pelly, And that is because when Monique and Naveen from Before You Play gave me this game, they brought it all the way from America in a suitcase and gave it me. It had the expansion, which I was happy about. I have the backstage expansion for Shakespeare, which is just up there. I have the jewelry box expansion for Rococo, which are both very small little expansions that add just a bit more stuff to the games. I've got the expansion for Targi, which is one of my favorite games as well. And I own pretty much everything there is to own for Viticulture. I almost bought the um, the cheese and tomatoes, the uh, Arabora, whatever it's called, expansion for that, which is you can only get an official print and play version of. I might get that at some point, but I own pretty much everything there is that, and I'll be buying the new expansion for Viticulture. It should be out now. Is it out now? You know I probably already got it. Let's be real. So I was like, out of all the games I own, I only own that many expansions. Maybe for me, the answer is nay nay on expansions but I also like them I don't play any of my games enough to need any expansions really and if I am playing that game I'm normally playing it with someone who's not played it a lot themselves or someone who's not played it at all in which case I won't throw the expansion in anyway one of the reasons I got the expansions of Viticulture is I could play it solo so many times so I was like, maybe some more challenges there. Also, it's one of the best games ever made, and I love it, and it makes me feel happy, genuinely, inside. I love that game. Another type of game that I really do like expansions for are party games. Sometimes, you know, you run out of trivia questions to play in your party game. You know, P for Pizza is a party game that I absolutely love. Mystic Paths, fantastic party game just there, but... If, a, if an expansion came out for Mystic Paths, I'd get it. It'd just be new uh, new words on tiles because it's a game of connecting words. But things like code names and stuff like that. You know, Anomia, another fantastic party game. I just want more cards because those games really lend themselves to the variation being necessary after a while. I mean, if you play it once a year, then probably maybe not. But I do think for some party games, I've Expansions I think are fantastic. Another type of expansion that I do like are new maps for games, such as Maglev Metro. I am definitely going to be getting the expansions for Maglev Metro. I think new maps for things like Ticket to Ride, Railways of the World, that type of thing, I totally understand those type of expansions a lot. So as much as I think expansions, no, I don't need them. I they, There are so many caveats to, to when I do need them and when I do love them and the hypocrisy of the amount of expansions I own. I think I might be more of a yay than a nay. But before we get on to question two, here's a quick word from the people who helped make this episode possible. This episode is made... Hello there, by the way. Hi. Uh, this episode is made possible in part by the Civil War story arc for the Versus System two-player card game in which courageous characters use equipment and plot twists in a variety of exciting locations in order to defeat their opponent. 
This Civil War story arc is a great place to jump into the action, which includes the Civil War battles, Secret Avengers, and Thunderbolts. In Civil War, a conflict between Iron Man and Captain America explodes, engulfing the entire world in a battle featuring the world's most powerful superheroes. In Secret Avengers, a covert and powerful squad of heroes counteracts grave threats to superhero liberty. And then the conflict reaches a fevered pitch in Thunderbolts when Iron Man forges new and questionable alliances with reformed supervillains. But don't worry, <laughs> I'm sure they're trustworthy. The entire Versus System two-player card game Civil War story arc is available right now at friendly local game stores and by following the link in this video's description to UpperDeckStore.com. The next question is a very interesting concept to me. And it's, what do you do when someone is playing the rules wrong, but you find out halfway through the game? Ah, <sighs> this has definitely happened to me. I remember it happening. I won't say the game because I don't want to out anybody who it was, but we're playing this game and halfway through, I realized that someone was, instead of discarding sets of cards, were just discarding the amount of cards that was needed. And that makes it much easier for that person to do the things that they needed to do. And I didn't want to say, uh, you're cheating because they did not know they were doing it wrong. They just, I, I probably had not mentioned it. I, I taught the game. I probably did not emphasize that point enough. So really it's on me. They'd never played the game before. And so I was in a dilemma. I thought, well, we're not playing the game right. I was still winning because, you know, I'm an absolute gaming genius. <laughs> I got some very lucky early turns, actually, in that game. And I thought, do I bring it up? Do I say anything? I mean, what a quandary. I ended up not saying anything for the whole game and thought, well, maybe the next time they play that game, they'll read the rule book again and they won't cheat accidentally. They won't play it wrong. They weren't cheating in any way, but they, were, they won't play it wrong next time. Or maybe someone else will do it. Kind of what I wanted to do was for someone else to notice it, frankly. And I'm a bit annoyed at myself about that because I, I shouldn't have, I should have done something differently. But I have a friend called Slivers and he actually had a really good answer for this question. And he said what he does is at the end of the game, if someone's been playing wrong, he says, he kind of picks up the rule book and then we'll flick through. He knows what was happened. Flicks through and says, oh, dang it. Looks like we were playing this game wrong. Oh, next time we should do it differently. So what he does, is he allows the game to end. He doesn't, you know, shame anyone or make anyone feel bad. And sometimes just make someone, you know, sometimes it's not a big deal, but sometimes when you've got a game going on and someone's been playing wrong and they're gonna feel bad because they feel like they've they've undercut everybody's game and stuff. And it's not a good situation, but sometimes it's fine. You just go, you absolutely need to pay a coin for doing that next time because you haven't been doing it. And they'll go, oh, oh well, <laughs> you know, and it's fine. But sometimes you can't do that. He puts the onus on everybody lets the person know what's happened at the end of the game, doesn't single them out for doing it. And I was like, that's a really good way of handling that situation. Because for me, board games are meant to be an experience that everybody enjoys and everybody comes away from feeling better, having gotten something from the experience, whether that was something intellectual or something social, both, hopefully. Actually, not hopefully, I don't need something intellectual. Sometimes I just want to be very silly. I never want people to leave my table feeling worse for having been there. I never want that to happen ever, unless I've cooked, in which case they have no choice. They must say they enjoyed the food, otherwise they're bad people in that, at that point, right? But yeah, I was like, that's a fantastic way to deal with that. Read the rule book at the end, go, oh, I had a fantastic realization. We were doing this wrong. Nobody has to lose face in that situation, and I think it's a good way to resolve it. But what do you think? Someone is playing the game wrong. You're a good 55% through that game. Do you bring it up? Do you start again? Do you say something? How would you deal with that situation? I really like the way Slivers handled it. And our final question is, what are the lowest rated games in your collection and why? No, I don't know how that why was meant. Was it quite accusatory? It's like, what 
Why? Why do you own that game? Well, because the freedom of choice, and I like some obscure games. Does it make me feel good? Yes. It's a flaw in my character, and I can recognise that, but I do like it. So, I've written down some of my lowest ranked games on Board Game Geek, and I'll just talk a little bit about why I own them. And it's, again, another... <laughs> Another step up on my soapbox to say, hey, just because it's rated low doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's misunderstood. Animotion, which not only is a fantastic double pun of a name, it's also a brilliant little small box card game. It's ranked at 17,620. I have to assume that's going to go up because this reprint has just happened. And it's such a wonderful party game. You're going to roll two dice and the dice represent one of six animals and one of six emotions. And then you have to act it out. You have to act out what animal and emotion. Are you an angry beaver? Are you a disgruntled goat? And you have to guess. Everyone else has to guess. And there's a way to score. You get points. But it's fun just to go around a couple of times and be silly. It's such a fun party game. Probably not for everyone because of the acting. Uh acting quote unquote the performance part of it and not everyone's comfortable doing stuff like that but yeah such a fun party game absolutely think it's fantastic silent planet is a small box amigo card game ranked 18,440 again this came out in 2021 and it's a kind of the mind style game essentially you're trying to crew these spacecraft so you want all the same or all different aliens that are going on it and you do it in silence through what could be seen as random guessing but it's not you've got like a row of cards in front of you and a few of them are turned up to give the other players an idea of what's going on in your hand of cards that's in front of you which they're going to be picking from but the ones that are face up you can't choose so you're going to go, they've got a one face up there and we need a one. Does that mean that the one before it is another one? Probably. And, you know, that type of thing. There's a bit of a silent deduction going on. I think that one will improve as well in the rankings. I think it's one of those, it's only available in German at the moment. I think it's just not quite hit yet. It's a good one if you like that style of game. The next game is called Discover India. It's a queen game. It's actually right there. You can't see this just off camera, but it's Discover India. It's rated 18,562. I do not know why this game is so low ranked. It's just, it makes no sense to me because it's such a good family entryway Euro game for people where you're going around a map of India, you're collecting these tiles which are either one or two colours and you're putting them onto your own player board to try and make sets of the colours, linking them by the colours. So you want to have big groupings of these different colours tiles. It's fun, it's fast, it's very simple to learn, it's a wonderful looking game. I think it's quite innovative, it doesn't do anything I've seen other games do. You know, if I'm playing Ticket to Ride, one of the next games I might bring out as well, that game night is Discover India, because it's a wonderful game that I really think more people should try. And the final lowest ranked game that I own is Wappy, which is a Rainer Knizia game. It's ranked 21,088. And I don't know why. It's a re-implementation of a game called Gold Digger. There's quite a few games that have used this same system. But essentially what you're doing is you're trying to either put silver into mines or claim those mines. And you want to claim the mines that are going to have the most silver in it at the end of the game. However, if you claim the mine too early, then people are just going to fill that mine full of rubbish silver uh, but you want to claim it too late other people are going to get all the good stakes and that's it's simple it's fast it's easy the wappy version i think looks absolutely beautiful <sighs> Twenty-one thousand and eighty-eight. how how is it possible is it possible because there's just that many games I don't know. I wish it was ranked higher. I really do. But those are my lowest ranked games that I still really, really enjoy. And I just feel like, I don't know, I don't know if I need to die on this hill. But I really do just think that just because a game's ranked low does not necessarily mean it's a bad game. I think there's a lot of games that are just, maybe it's a personal thing. Those games are just misunderstood and people don't realise how fantastic they are. Does that hit close to home, anyone? Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I like those games. So don't judge a book by its cover, especially when it's a board game. So what are your lowest ranked games that you enjoy? Let me know, because I tell you, 
If I've not heard of it, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> and knowing me, I'm gonna try and buy it. <laughs> so I'd love to see all your low rank games that you absolutely love. Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, that's the episode. If you've got any answers to any of the questions, then I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm sure your answers are fantastic. Pop them below. If you want to carry on on this watch it play journey that you've started, you wonderful person, then you can follow this video. That's some news for you. And I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.